This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute, and available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Matthew Wilson, about a recent report titled The Globalization of Teams. Matthew Wilson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Great to great to, great to be on here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the UK. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about a recent report out by your company titled The Globalization of Teams. I'm all about teams and organizational dynamics and helping organizations uh, thrive through effective teams. So I'm super excited to explore this topic with you today. As we get started, I wanted to share Matthew's bio with everybody. Matthew Wilson is an experienced entrepreneur and technologist. Prior to founding Omnipresent, he founded and ran an enterprise software business in the pharmaceutical industry and spent time as a software engineer and product manager. He holds a master's degree in theoretical and mathematical physics from the University of Oxford. He was named Forbes 30 under 30 in 2019. Oh my goodness. Theoretical and mathematical physics is something I can't even wrap my head around. Um, Though my my wife is a mathematician, so I'll have to tell her that I interviewed you today. (laughs) Wonderful. Great to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive in? No, I, um, that's uh, that, that's a pretty good uh, pretty good overview. Thanks, John. Wonderful. All right. Well, why don't we start by just talking a little bit about um, and framing up this report, the globalization of teams? Uh, can you explain 
for me and my audience a little bit more about the context behind this report, uh, how it came into being, and then we can start to dive into some of the key points and the implications. Sure. So probably a good place to start would be to talk a little bit about Omnipresent, the company that um, I've uh, co-founded uh, and, uh, and I'm co-CEO of, um, where, which commissioned the report. So prior to uh, to, to starting Omnipresent, I, I was running another another business. And um, at that business, I, I learned two important things. One was how important talent was, how important teams were, um, and how much of a competitive advantage you could get from building an amazing team. And the second was how work and business was moving online. Um, you'd be sat in an office and uh, instead of uh, going having a conversation with somebody across uh, across the room from you, you would send them a Slack or send them an email. Um, you're able to do business with uh, people in different cities and, and all around the world um, from, uh, from from your own desk, uh, from, from behind your webcam. And those were two insights that led uh, me to go on and found Omnipresent with uh, my co-founder three years ago. And... At Omnipresent, we help other businesses um, expand internationally, build the best teams on earth, hire the best people anywhere in the world. And um, of the last few years of uh, of um, running Omnipresent, helping companies um, build global teams, um, as well as building our own global team of over 450 people around more than 50 countries around the world, um, we saw lots and lots of uh, um, people talking about um remote work versus hybrid work, um, whether you could be, uh, pr- whether you were more productive working remotely or working hybrid or working in an office. Um, but actually what we saw less of were people talking about the benefits that came from companies hiring the best people anywhere in the world, being able to open up the talent pool globally. Um, and likewise, the benefits for individuals to be able to get access to opportunities all over the world, to be able to get a job at a company um, from from anywhere in the world rather than just those companies that are local to where you are um and actually we well as, as we went about building building this business and helping companies day to day uh we started to think actually there's there's going to be some pretty significant impacts on society more broadly as this change comes to be because um the impact to, to businesses to individuals and society is more than just um Oh, you know, we we can hire these people that we we, we couldn't hire before, or we're going to work in a more remote environment. Actually, we'll have some pretty major implications on how we live, where we live, the types of work we do, and ultimately um, how productive and innovative we can be um, as uh, as a global society. Yeah, yeah. The geographical barriers break down once you can work remotely and virtually, right? Let me step back for a second and say that we've had virtual teams for a really long time. I mean, there, there have been people who, who have telecommuted for a long time and you've had whole organizations that have been completely virtual organizations for decades um, and have utilized these technologies to allow them to do that. Um, but it hasn't been, you know, broadly utilized and it hasn't been wide scale. So what we've seen, the difference we've seen over the last few years is because of the pandemic, people had to to jump on and, and flip the switch and do that, even if they weren't comfortable with it. Uh, and so more and more, you know, of the labor market now is comfortable with the idea of virtual work or at least hybrid work and, and even crave, you know, the flexibility that comes with it. And so once you move into the space where you can have a virtual team, uh, it really does break down the geographical barriers. No longer do you have to be, you know, within commuting distance of the headquarters or wherever the, the office might be, but you can be anywhere, literally anywhere in the world, as long as you have a good, you know, internet connection as long as you can uh you know accommodate the 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 time zones and the and the work schedules um that need to be dealt with uh you can work with anybody and and there are challenges to that i've had lots of conversations with ceos around you know their apprehension around virtual teams and their concerns about you know not having people together to collaborate in a physical office space and there's certainly some challenges on how to do that effectively but the pros are huge when you think about now being able to leverage a global labor market, uh, you know, talented people from anywhere across the globe, um, the flexibility that employees crave that now they can have, they can, they can, you know, 
get their sprinter van and travel around the the world and 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 work wherever they happen to be parked that day um you know that's an extreme example of course but um in everything in between right it it just provides so much opportunity and flexibility for organizations if they can figure out how to have uh, these globalized teams that are as effective and collaborative and innovative as maybe their face-to-face -face versions had been uh, previously. Yeah, I think um, you know what we what what we saw was over the last you know uh, thirty, forty, fifty years you've got kind of two things coming in that, uh, that that lay the groundwork for this, right? So the digitization of knowledge work um, has been happening for a long time, gradually, gradually, gradually. Um, and and then the rise of uh, things like LinkedIn, social media, online job platforms, allowing people to connect and, and, and access opportunity um, uh, online. Um, those two things have been happening, you know, gradually, gradually, gradually over the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, but really, I think, you know, when um, the pandemic hit, um, there was this forced behavioral change for lots and lots of people and lots and lots of businesses. Uh, lots of companies uh, realized, um, oh, actually, this works. This works really well. Everybody is still being uh, as productive, if not more productive than they were being when uh, when when we were making them come in and commute every day. And lots of employees, as you say, have had the, had, had that taste, realized they can work productively and um and, and and don't want to go back. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the conversation that we see is around, are people more productive in an office or are people more productive working remotely or are people more productive working in a hybrid model? But I think, you know, what businesses um, who, who are really taking advantage of this shift have realized is it's not just about, you know, the relative productivity gains. It's about fundamentally changing the talent pool that you can build your team from and when you can hire the best person in the world for the job there at hand rather than the best person who happens to be available who's in a 45 minute commute who you're competing with with hundreds and hundreds of other businesses for um that is just a complete paradigm shift for businesses and can and can drive such an advantage you know we've seen that ourselves with our own team uh, we've been remote since day one but we've also been globally distributed since day one so we're hiring people from all over the world our team is spread over more than 50 countries i think we just went past 55 countries a few weeks ago and that the talent that we've been able to attract into our business because of that policy has been you know completely incomparable to what we'd have been able to attract and at the um if, if we would have um, made, 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 had a, an office in london that everybody was working in um every, every day um i think the 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 challenge and this is where why we why we found it omnipresent is um you know we think across 50 50 plus countries even two or three countries the administrative complexity that that can bring can be really really high the hr teams that uh, that are maybe experts in operating uh, teams based in the us um sorting out healthcare sorting out the employment law understanding how to um, run and manage payroll understanding the tax implications um, suddenly when you start to go international uh, that becomes just exponentially more complex complex the more countries that you operate across and that's exactly why we uh, why we set up omnipresent and what we do at omnipresent is help deal with the complexity that that brings um, really unlocking this ability to hire the best person anywhere in the world without just piling on a ton of complexity onto your onto your business yeah and and there's no question i mean employment and labor law is complicated when you're just operating in one place <laughs> and then you just amplify that you know when now you have people in a distributed team working all over the place clearly that becomes complicated um and and to have organizations and services that can help you to deal with that i think is going to be really important and and help people who are still resistant to this idea of virtual work or or, or uh, distributed teams to to lean more into that opportunity. Uh, I, I definitely know of many of those organizations that as soon as things open back up after COVID, they're like, all right, everyone back to the office. Like, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, and they just felt like it was a burden. And like, if we can ease the, the burden side of the equation, yeah. um, you know, there are so many benefits that can come from it that uh, that 
I, I think we can leverage those benefits, um, but yeah. we do have to address the the challenges and the complexities. Um, yeah. I speak to no, go, speak, go ahead. Go ahead. Speak, I think one thing I find interesting is is speaking to uh, uh, to HR teams, to execs, to other businesses that have adopted remote working, or at least it, or maybe in one part of their business they've adopted remote working, or they've done that more broadly, but still hire everybody within an hour's radius of, of an office or or within one country. And I think those businesses are the ones that are missing out the most. They've already got the working practices in place to be able to do to to um, take advantage of uh, of this, you know, kind of superpower of being able to hire the best person in the world and um and then are missing out on that. Um and really the that they they can get such a benefit without really changing too much um from from a working patterns perspective. Yeah. And you mentioned, I mean, this really just like globalization, generally speaking, in the broadest sense of the term, has transformed society <laughs> uh, in the interconnectedness of the globe. Um, as we have more distributed teams and we talk about the globalization of teams, that is going to have societal implications. It's going to shift things. Uh, and of course, one of the most obvious elements of that is it it will impact how where and how people work, right? Uh, and so, you know, for the longest time, as we've gone through the different waves of the Industrial Revolution, uh, you know, people have swarmed to metropolitan areas and to big cities. Uh, and this has a potential to disrupt that kind of a trend. Uh, what do you see happening in terms of how people, uh, how population centers exist and, and how that shifts over time as we move into the future and what that means for businesses? Yeah, I, I I think it's 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 got the potential to be really really profound. Um, you know, we, as you say, we've seen huge changes um, in society and where people base themselves due to um, due, due to the industrial revolution, due to to globalization over the last over the last forty fifty years. Um, and we believe that the next shift is going to come from the globalization of, of teams and of knowledge work. And you know, you can already start to see this this happening. So the first thing that we're seeing happening is. Um, uh, as people are working more hybrid uh, roles or more remote roles um, in big cities, there's less of a premium on being close to the city centre. So you're seeing um, this flight from for, from being close into the city centre with a short commute to having more space, better standard of living, um, yeah, um, cheap, cheaper real estate outside of the city centre. So you've seen this kind of hollowing out of cities as people have moved out of the city centre into commuter towns or or um, or, or into, um, into, into the suburbs. The, the second phase is uh, once people realise they can do this, starting to move outside of cities altogether. Um, and, you know, there was a study that suggested that 5 million Americans had relocated because of remote work since 2020. And a further 19 million were planning to do so. But 40% of those 19 million would move more than two hours from their main workplace. I mean, that is a huge, huge number of people, a significant um, portion of the American population. Um, and as the remote work job market deepens, this gives knowledge workers even more confidence to take a plunge, to move, to leave overcrowded, overly expensive cities where they have a lower standard of living and being able to go out and work a fantastic job, but also live life in the way they want to as well. The third phase of that, um, we think, is um, is then the globalization of this. So it's not just people moving within a, within a country. It's employers realizing that if jobs can be done remotely, they can recruit for that job anywhere in the world. They can hire the best person in the world for that job. And um, that will have some pretty profound impacts as well. Both the benefit that that will bring to businesses being able to have um, uh, have the world's top talent in their, in their teams, um, to be able to do that, at, um, uh, to be able to build a diverse team with people from all around the world and all the benefits that we know and have kind of time and time again been proven from having diversity of thought in teams. But also for workers themselves, they will be, um, you know, on one hand, have access to the whole world um, of opportunity, 
uh, on the other hand, will be competing in a global talent market. And uh, that brings tremendous opportunity, but also some uh, some potential for challenge as well. Um, I think, you know, what we have seen so far um, within the tech, uh, it, uh, the tech ecosystem, which has been the ecosystem that has um, probably adopted remote work the fastest and the deepest of of, of any of, of any um, sector is that wages haven't uh, dropped as you might expect them to do as companies get a, um, access to a broader pool of talent. But actually for the top roles, um, wages have stayed the same, but it's just been that there's a larger talent pool that are able to, to, to go and, uh, and compete for those wages. So that's um, uh, a promising sign that this will be a net positive both for the businesses, but also for uh, employees as well. Yeah, and that's how I see it too. I, I really do think that overall this is going to be a net positive uh, for organizations, despite the hand wringing that continues to happen <laughs> uh, amongst some leaders and organizations who really are. It, it's just out of their comfort zone, so they really want people to come back. They don't know how to lead if people aren't there, and they can't walk around and see people with butts and seats. And and I I get that, and I understand there's a learning curve there, and I understand it's going to be hard, especially for people who you know are. Uh, have came up in their career in a completely different environment. They've, they've risen in their career and they've been leaders in a completely di different environment. I understand that discomfort. Um, but just like everything else that's changing in this rapidly, you know, changing world For of sure. work and the, 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 the global and social landscape, you know, we're going to have to learn how to uh, adjust and adapt to this, or we're going to lose out on the best talent. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, we did a, a, a study, um, in August and uh, surveyed 500 US business leaders. And um, despite, you know, the kind of loud minority, uh, you know, uh, shouting about uh, about um, a return to the office, actually 94% of US businesses that we surveyed um, were planning to adopt a remote or hybrid model in the next 12 months. Um, you know, that's you know, we estimate about one and a half billion, one and a half million businesses across the across the US, um, and that is just a, a, a change that's that's you know the um, it's 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 out of the bag, and and that's that's definitely the direction that, that that things are going in. And when you look at employee surveys as well, they're equally strong. And actually, I'm really excited for the next few years in terms of the technologies that are going to be built to support that type of working as well. Because actually, we think about the stack that we use today. I mean, we're talking today over Zoom. Um, Zoom was a technology that existed prior to the mass adoption of, of, of remote working. Well, I think the next generation of tools that are going to come in are going to be really, really exciting and be able to uh, lift the level of productivity, of collaboration, even higher than it is today, which, as we've seen, has kind of matched what you can get in an office. So I think, you know, there's there's still headroom for for productivity growth um, with with better technologies and tools as well, not to mention all the benefits yeah. that we already spoke about around uh, the ability to, to build those global teams. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, because there's going to be new technologies emerging or being refined and enhanced, uh, this is an evolutionary process. Like yeah. we're at the early stages of widespread adoption so, of yeah, virtual I mean, had, work and distributed teams. We've had, we've had, you know, a hundred years of, uh, of working in an office, figuring out how best to, uh, to, to, to work in that environment. And we've had, you know, as you say, it's been going on for a while, but really with any, with any kind of mass adoption, it's been, it's been two years. And um, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's not very long to develop new tools and technologies, new frameworks for working, new organizational models. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, with the volume of people and businesses working like this, the uh, the the pace of change I think we'll see over the next few years is going to be uh, is going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, I agree. Wonderful. Well, Matthew, uh, we've just scratched the surface here. I know there's a whole lot more we could dig into, but I also note the time and I need to let you go here in just a minute. So before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work and your team, where they can find this report, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Sure. So um, you can find us at omnipresent.com. And just a, a reminder for, for what we do uh, here at Omnipresent is we help companies that want to take advantage of uh, of hiring the best people in the world do that. We take care of all of the complex administration when it comes to hiring abroad. 
How do you employ people? How do you pay people? How do you manage employee benefits um, when you've got people in different countries with different um, expectations and different norms? Um, And really make it simple for businesses to build the best teams on earth. Um, As I said, we're we're at omnipresent.com. The report that we've talk, talked about, it's actually, it's a pretty lengthy report. I think it's it's super interesting. It was written by a uh, an economist and journalist um, called Lawrence H. Knight, who um, used to work for the BBC. It's a fascinating report. Uh, you can find that at omnipresent.com as well, as well as uh, learn more about what we do and the other content that we put out as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Matthew. It's truly been a pleasure. I encourage my audience to reach out and get connected. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.